Hi, and welcome to another video. In this video will be a speed paint slash character design process video where I try my best to go step by step in my process for creating my characters. In this video I will be creating a Mine Sona, which is so short for Minecraft Persona or Minecraft Sona, which is kind of like drawing yourself in the game Minecraft. <laughs> I want to once again apologize for the terrible mic audio. I don't have a closet to sit in anymore, uh, so I am currently hanging a bathrobe over my head to hopefully make the sound a little bit better. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video and let's get on with the process. The first step of character creation is brainstorming. I usually go to Pinterest to gather up a bunch of ideas of how the character will look and the kind of aesthetic I want to go for. That's the images you see on the side of my canvas. But before I do any of that, I have to come up with an idea first. My original idea for this character was a traveling merchant or farmer decorated with diamond and emerald jewelry that they got from their trades. Someone who's a bit too fond of money sometimes, enjoys traveling, and looks really cool. After I've got my idea in my head, I get to work. What you're seeing here is the rough idea phase, or at least that's what I call it. In this phase, I try to create as many versions of my idea that I have in my head and put them all on the canvas, trying out anything I might enjoy or might not enjoy. Everything needs to be tested. You never know what idea you might end up loving. This is the point where I played with the idea of making the character a little bit more nerdy. I didn't go with that idea, and instead I came to think of going more deep into the merchant part of the character. <laughs> One of the things I got inspiration from is the video game Off, which is my favorite video game. In this game there is a merchant character who is a bit strange and breaks the fourth wall a couple times. It is a horror game, so it's very different from Minecraft, but I really like this character, so I wanted some part of him to be in my character. I mean, especially since both of them are merchants, although they sell very different things. But I got the idea while making this version of making a character who is a bit more sneaky, a bit more sly, and isn't exactly what they seem. I've always liked characters like those, and I always really enjoy drawing them and creating things for them. And I often really relate to them too. And since this is supposed to be a persona, aka me, I wanted to do something I can really relate to. Here's a hot tip, um, if you ever find yourself struggling with giving a character a hairstyle, maybe try giving them some kind of headwear, or like a straw hat, or a baseball cap, or a headband with a bow on it. I find that giving your character something to wear on their head usually so it shows a lot of personality. After making all of these sketches that explore the different ideas I had in my head, I take all the things from these sketches that I like and combine them into one. I try to pick out the things that were the most visually interesting, like the things that fit with the aesthetic the most, and in this case the things that speak the most to me. Uh, since this is a persona and not a regu regular character design for, say, an animated movie or a comic book, I try to pick the things that fit the most with how I want to portray myself. the character design process is shape and silhouette. Now that I've got a more solid idea in my head, it's time to refine that idea. In this case, I knew I wanted the character's shapes to be made of mostly squares and some triangles. Uh, squares usually represent being down to earth, stern, or strong, while triangles usually represent being sharp, dangerous, or quick. 
Since this character is mostly based on one shape, I didn't really have to do a lot, but I still made sure that the silhouette of the body is readable and clear. Showing clearly where the hands and feet and neck are is one way to do that, since it makes it easier to understand the pose and body type of the character, even if they're wearing really baggy clothing like mine is. Moving on to color, this is a very exciting step of character design since the color can show a lot of personality. In this case I did three different color schemes. The first one I took inspiration from my reference images I have on the side here, eye dropping some of the colors I thought worked really well as well as adding in colors I thought that I thought would work well. A good tip for creating color schemes is to use the same color in multiple areas. Maybe if the pants and shirts and jacket are all different colors, having the shoes, belt, hat and any other accessory be the same color will really help things tie together. Not everything needs to be a different color or stand out. Pick one or two things you want to be the focus of your character and give all the interesting colors to those things. Now we've got all the basic things down. A good grasp of the character, personality, and aesthetic, a clear silhouette and interesting shapes, and a color scheme that we like. The last step is to create a final drawing, adding all the details and polish so that when you're drawing this character again in the future, you have a reference image you can look to. This step you can really do however you want, although I do have some tips. Tip number one. Reference images you want to be clear and readable, so make sure you choose a pose or multiple poses that show everything. Having your character sit down and hunched over with their arms over their chest is not a good idea, because you won't be able to see all the things you want to draw. Number two, consider drawing your characters from different angles. A lot of artists do front and back, and some also do side profiles. This will help you if you ever need to draw your character from multiple angles, which you usually will have to at one point. I didn't follow this tip for my reference because I was pressed for time and I just needed something quick. <laughs> tip number three, consider the layers of your character. If this character is going to be drawn by other people that aren't you, you should consider drawing them in different layers of their clothing. My character here has a big jacket and a hat, so maybe adding a drawing where they're not wearing those things is a good idea. That way, if someone wants to draw your character, say, sleeping, they don't have to guess what they would look like without their hat. Some artists will even draw their characters in their underwear or very little clothing, mostly to show if they have scars or tattoos or a birthmark or anything on their skin that isn't shown when they're wearing clothing. Tip number four, this one probably should have been tip number one. Look at other people's reference images for ideas. Maybe you want to add information like their name and age and height, or maybe you want to draw their face close up. Look at the reference images you like and pick out the things you think would be important for your own reference. You don't have to add 10 different poses and angles for a character you only draw once or twice. All these tips and steps are option. In the end, it's up to you to choose the most important things. Now without further ado, I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this speed paint.
that's the speed paint. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through, it really means a lot. And thank you once again for over 5,000 subscribers. It really means a lot to me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.